Welcome to the course. Greetings from Laramie, Wyoming. I'm Michael Day. During the next 16 weeks, we'll trace the roots of the adult education movement in the U.S. and in Tennessee, beginning with the 1770s and Benjamin Franklin, our patron saint, concluding in the 1970s, when the more modern age of adult education begins. I introduced this graduate level course in the late 1980s at the University of Wyoming. Over the years, it became my favorite course to teach. I believe students enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. When I was a graduate student in adult education at the University of Michigan, 77 to 81, I had a professor named Howard McCluskey, wonderful man and teacher. He was 77 when I first met him. He liked to begin each course with two related questions. What does it mean to be an adult? And what does being an adult have to do with adult education? I hope you think about those two questions a lot during this course. While I was at the University of Michigan, I took many formal adult education courses. But my favorite class was informal and wasn't part of the curriculum. In the summer of 1979, a few graduate students approached Larry Berlin, our department head, and asked if he could lead a discussion group exploring the roots of the adult education profession. He agreed, but only if the graduate students were willing to read and discuss the books he chose. So began an adventure that lasted for many years, and that became the catalyst for this course. Larry's selections of books surprised me and the other graduate students. We expected titles to have direct bearing on adult education. Instead, Larry selected books that defined us as a people living and teaching in the 20th century. Our discussion topics included the purpose of government, the meaning of justice, whether equality, freedom, democracy, and liberty can all coexist. Usually, but not always, Larry also generated some linkages between the readings and implications for adult ed. This course is modeled on those informal discussions with a dozen graduate students sitting on Larry's floor, exploring and applying ideas to their own lives. We don't have the luxury of face-to-face -face conversations, but we can still make the material engaging. Larry would often introduce a discussion book by providing some historical context. In this course, we will try to do the same. Defining adult education. Our working definition emerged during those graduate student conversations with Larry Berlin back in 1979. Adult education is the process by which adults continue to make sense of the times in which they live. A commitment to remain open to novelty, to engage like actively, not passively, and a willingness to continue maturing throughout life. As we'll see throughout the course, this definition embodies a particular set of values and beliefs about adult education. Why study the history of adult education? When I consider why the history of adult ed is beneficial, three reasons come quickly to mind. Such exposure fuels inquiry, embodies life's fundamentals, and provides an adhesive for connectedness. I find it extremely difficult to approach history and not have my curiosity aroused. Why couldn't women in this country vote in national elections until 1920? When and why were junior colleges constructed? Why were American settlers allowed to take the lands of Indian nations? What attracts so many people to the West? History is fascinating. A story of what happened when, where, how, and is packed with speculation about why. History is packed with relevance because it records the collective experiences of people who have much in common. For example, those who fought for independence, Native Americans, as well as colonists, who attended to family and hearth, and who labored for social justice, share the same basic insecurities surrounding life. 
History ponders questions regarding life's purpose, the seemingly endless challenges posed by social and technological change, the demands of family and community, and the always fragile balance stemming from the desires of the individual and the expectations of the group. Though each experience remains unique to time and place, still the experiences of life generally are strikingly familiar. History provides a natural adhesive for connectedness amongst people, events, technology, and social decisions. Consider for a moment our proximity to the actual roots of this society's government, laws, manners, and approach to education. Many readers are only a few lifespans removed from the American Revolution. Some of us were living during John Dewey's lifetime. Dewey's life intersected with such notable figures as Susan B. Anthony, who was 41 years of age at the beginning of the American Civil War, and Anthony was six years of age when Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, died. We are a young nation. In my personal journey to understand the meaning and significance of education throughout life, I have come across some very rem remarkable people. I view them as neighbors of sorts. They range from theorists and writers such as John Dewey and Mortimer Adler, who, though differing greatly in approach and theory, both believe passionately that opportunities to learn, grow, and mature both mentally and socially throughout life were the birthright of all. Before sharing course activities and requirements, I should clarify how I view your participation in the course. First, you are viewed as an adult with adult-like responsibilities, deserving of respect and consideration. Because this is a graduate level course, it is also assumed you are capable of graduate level work, have developed the academic skills necessary to successfully complete the course. Also, that you can access information, formulate research questions or problems, and can conduct research. It is also assumed you can direct your own learning, can manage time, and motivate yourselves to actively engage in the material. Therefore, you have the option to work on an A or a B project for the course. Given that you do not all have the same amount of time to devote to a graduate level course, you have the choice to work on an A or a B project, that is an A or B grade in the course. As you will see, the course requirements are slightly different for the two projects. The course really only has about seven different activities for you to complete. All I hope that you'll find worthwhile. The first, a student information sheet providing me with a little bit more of your background. The second, a personal timeline summary, just looking at your life against the historical context in which you have lived. These summaries should be returned to me by the end of the second week of the course. Uh, next, you'll be asked to read a few books in the area of adult education. Lindemann's The Meaning of Adult Education and Dewey's Experience in Education. But you're also asked to read a few others, but these are of your choosing. Uh, I've provided a personal top 51 works in adult ed from my point of view uh, for you to consider in making your selections. After completing each work, you're asked to provide a critical book summary. I'll give you an illustration of how to do that, what I'm expecting under the assignments, and I hope that you'll find that uh, activity uh, particularly useful. I see the guidelines for due dates and for grading. You're also asked throughout the course to enter into course chats, uh, an opportunity for you to share your ideas with others and for me to get a sense of what you're thinking about a particular uh, subject. Uh, you look at the syllabus for the expectations regarding weekly chat participation. The bulk of the course is divided into 10 time periods. 
I'll be responsible for three of those time periods and you'll be responsible as a team member for the other seven. Uh, during the first two weeks of the class, you're asked to form into groups of two to three members and to select a time period that you'll be responsible for for a presentation of material and to lead a chat of that material. Uh, see the syllabus for guidelines, due dates, and grading. Uh, next, you're asked to select a particular figure from the history, either generally or in Tennessee, and to share with other members of the class some information about the individual that you've selected. This is a biographical sketch presentation. Again, see the syllabus for more information. I've included both in the syllabus, and I have a slide here, though the names are a little difficult to read, of some possible choices for you to make. Uh, and certainly the choices can be made from adult education figures within Tennessee as well. Our last uh, assignment is to uh, complete and conduct a little mini historical investigation of a local illustration of adult education in Tennessee or the state in which you reside. During our last two class sessions, each of you will schedule a time, provide a slide presentation, and lead a course chat. Uh, see the syllabus for guidelines and due dates and grading. I provided some possibilities. Tennessee is rich in adult education illustrations, a wonderful, fascinating history. Uh, so both in the syllabus and on this slide, you'll have an idea of some areas that you could select, but this is not inclusive. Feel, choice, feel free to make whatever choice you would like. I'm looking forward to working with you throughout the course, learning about your interests and backgrounds, and learning about adult education in Tennessee. As I mentioned earlier, I do hope you enjoy the course. It may look like a lot of work, but it may also be worthwhile.